this is Seneva. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And today we are taking a look at Roleplay Adventures, an adventure game from Keith Mateka and James Ryan. It plays from 1 to 4 players in 90 to 150 minutes per scenario. So another campaign game you it's might so say. Yes, it's so big, so it's almost like impossible to have uh, in the frame without both of us disappearing, which Hello. is kind of a weird thing to do in a video. So we're putting it away again. So role player adventures. This is another campaign game. Yes. Another scenario based game. We yeah. have so many of them. We and needed one more. Yes, always. That is why I backed this because we need all the adventure games in the world. So before we go into anything, let's know this is a story driven campaign game. So if you don't want to know anything about the game, like anything you might consider a spoiler, then don't watch the video. Yes. We're not going to go into any story details, we're not going to go into anything we think are spoilers, but if you don't want to know anything, obviously we can't promise that you won't find anything you might find spoilery. Yeah. So, Roleplay Adventures is a game where you will be playing through adventures. You're going to play through uh, 10 slash 11 slash 12, of, actually 11 slash 12 of these storybooks, which are going to be greatly different in how lengthy they are. You're going to play through the storybooks, but you're going to do that by moving on a map. So for example, this is the map for the first scenario, and this is the spoiler because it's the first thing you're going to see in the whole game. Yeah. So you are going to move around on the map, you're going to read things from the storybook. You might also read things from the Tomb of Encounters when you meet like basically half random encounters throughout the game and you're going to read those and many of them are going to lead you to either a combat or a skill check which you're going to do by checking a bunch of dice and then playing cards to manipulate them. Yeah. We haven't really played, I have played role player once and you have not no, played No, I have it. not played it. And that means that we can't really uh, talk a bit about, I'll talk about how they are alike or different. Uh, but I think uh, the way I have understood it is that the dice manipulation of the cards is kind of similar to roleplay, but we can't really talk about that. Yes. So that is what you're going to do. You're going to continue moving to a new space, do what is there, and do a skill check or a combat, maybe do some resting, do, have some choices in the, the, the story, and you're going to continue doing that until you find something that says you can go to the end. And then you might choose to go to the end, and you read what happens at the end of the scenario, and then you might either pack up the game, which is super simple. Let's talk about that yeah. also later because that's a very positive thing. Or you can just continue playing because the game is fun. So <laughs> that is kind of the gist of the game. Let's talk about how the game looks, the artwork and components. Um, the maps of the scenarios give you kind of an impression of what kind of landscape this is set in and gives you an overarching like setting to then make your own images from and the different places make you also like kind of expect what to, you you could meet in such a place i i like the scenario maps mm. or what most of like the artwork is but there's also a lot of artwork on the cards yes. and i think that is beautiful as well the normal components are good mm -hmm. like the, i like the chunky dice they're actually like normal, normal dice, dice that thing, yes. but I like the colors and it's vibrant and it just like looks good. Yeah, I like the, the artwork is I think the same from roleplay, it looks good. Oh, it's yeah. not like, it's not a game where I'm like, oh, over the artwork, because the story is the like main frame here. And I do enjoy the fact that even though there are some kind of like drawings here and there of the characters, most of the time you get to kind of make the images in your yes. head. At least a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of things you don't even see any pictures of. And I really enjoy that. Yeah, I agree. You have the title cards, which you also get throughout the game, where they are like, kind of like a different style of artwork. Yes. It's kind of like a more of a, a line drawing, and it looks kind of different. It might be exactly the same drawing style, but it looks different because it is presented in a very different way. Yes. So it's not... Like it looks nice on the table, it's a lot of colors, you have like lots of things to, to do, you have the map in the middle of your play area. I do think it looks good, it's like it's, it's a, a game that is, you want to play it when you put it out. When we, when we are gonna, when we play the new scenario, we, we place it open, the, the map, we're like, oh, that looks nice, I'm looking yeah. forward to play that map now. But like that said, there's not a lot of like d details on the map. No. Like uh, ether fields, for example, uh -huh. uh, are very like, oh, you you look at this and it, it's a lot of details to look at. It's not that here, it's more like, like destinies, yeah. how it's just like a setting. But I think this is more beautiful though. But this is more of a overworld map. Like yes. it's not a detail map, yeah. like, a, 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 Absolutely. like this is a city. Like, it's a it's an overview of where you are in the area basically agreed 
So let's talk about the rule book. Yeah. Yes, rule book is something that is needed, right? Yeah, and it has to be good as well. It has to, and this is a short rule book. It's like 20 pages long because it's a very simple game. It's not hard to learn the game because and there's not there's not that many edge cases because as we're going to talk about there's not that much gameplay and uh, there's mm, a lot of reading a lot of story so there is like a setup for the campaign you have key concepts which is nice tells you like how the different concepts of the game work actually i like that here because usually i hate it but that because it doesn't make sense but here it's a very simple gameplay you move somewhere and you do what it says and most of the time you can't move without the game telling you you can now move so yeah. it's it's not like oh what should we do now oh wow well, it's not very hard to make a mistake because yeah. you the game basically tells you what you can and cannot do that's true the skill checks and how everything works yeah it's, it's very well laid out i don't think we almost ever checked the no, rule book like the only we thing we checked was like twice. the prices for advancing the character for using yeah. experience points basically yeah. and and that is it's, it's it. some symbols here and there but the symbols are very well laid out here so you will get a good feeling of how the symbols work i think this is a very good rule book but then again the game is very simple but again a good rule book is important anyway anyway so yes. there's no player rates no but, but you I don't think need it's it fine. because it's basically you cannot do anything oh, oh there is a player rate for the skill checks and the combats but oh, yeah, not, there is actually. and those are nice in the yeah. first few times you go through them it's very nice to have like the order but after you've done like a couple of them and they're almost the bookmark. same thing <laughs> yes you have four of them and we have only two players so we use at least two of them as a bookmark yes we use uh, like uh, approximately two hours per scenario we played. Yeah, that was kind of like the average time spent. Yeah, mm. and it was shorter scenarios in the beginning or mm -hmm. we used less time on yeah. them. And towards like the mid of the campaign, we spent longer time on the scenarios yes. and then the final ones felt shorter again, or they were shorter. That is true. The game has 11 scenarios, as I said earlier. There's like 10 and a finale. I like the fact that they have like they didn't want to call it scenario 11 because I, I feel like they liked the fact that it was 10 scenarios and a finale. Yeah. Because 10 is scenario. So they may have like kind of a brain like I do. I enjoy that as well. And then there's one side quest which you basically can do many times if you want to. If you want to. Uh, but I suggest you do it. Like it's, it was a fun experience to do this I agree. throughout because you will level up and stuff throughout that scenario as well. Yeah. Uh, so we spent around 24 hours, I think, on the yeah. whole campaign. And uh, maybe if you add like one hour to 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 do like the experience, the level up and stuff like that, it's so like twenty five hours it should take with two players. We played two players. Yeah, we played two players. I imagine it would take some more time with more yes. players because there's more people having opinions on yes. what to do and where to go. And yeah, the skill check and the combats are cooperative. Mm. This is a co op game, so I'm very Shock. happy. I'm very happy that we played it at two players. Yeah, and if you've seen any of our videos about these kind of games, we don't usually play them in more than two players. Because many reasons. Yeah. Yes, because the story game, the co-op game, and stuff like that. Yes. So let's talk about the gameplay. Yeah. First off, like the, the gameplay loop is very simple. I already talked about it in the overview. You move somewhere, you read something. If it's a a, a like an encounter token, you read from the book of encounters. And if it's yes. uh, one of the, the story, like the spaces on the board, you 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 move to this. So basically, the encounters are randomized so that you don't know. And also for, for replayability, you don't know the, the order, you can't like remember all of them, you don't know where they are. Yeah. Uh, and also like things can happen in them that if you saw another encounter first, it would be different, which yes. is also a nice thing for replayability. Absolutely. And also for not being, you don't, yeah, and random wacky things can happen. And then you just read the, the, the things. Most of the time you have choices, like do you want to do this, do you want to go here, like do you, this is random, not an actual thing. You meet a little cat. The cat has a dagger in his hand, in his mouth. Do you want to pet the cat or kill it with fire? And then you choose one of them. Probably the kill it with fire would be a combat. The cat is a rare cat and it becomes six meters high and it won't kill you. Or that would be a fun thing. Or or you can do like a, a, a skill alert. check. It, it's not in the game. <laughs> Gladly it's not in the game. Yes. Like cats with knives. And then oh. you... Oh, sorry, spoil that. There's no cats with knives in the game now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, there might be. Might be. This might we be from the game. Yeah. This might be from the game. Uh, or you might do a skill check. Or, or other times there are like two different skill checks to choose between. Yeah, I like that you you get uh, to know what what uh, skills are required kind of yeah. to, yeah. to do the check. So you can see if you're really horrible at it or really good at it. Yes. And we, we, 
you could choose like what you would do in the story too. Yeah. Yes. It's like kind of two different ways to play the game. Yeah. I feel like I try to like, oh, what would we do? Uh, more about that later. But the the thing is that in these kind of games, it's I, I feel like it's a bad idea to do. Oh, this one I'm really good at, and this one I'm horrible at. Let's do the one I'm horrible at. Yeah. Because you do want to win the skill you check. Do I, want to do it. it is kind of like a game like Dungeons and Dragons. You don't die when you lose a skill check. You're just like something else happens. Like yes. you don't manage to do it, or you barely manage to do it, and, and stuff like that. Yes. So we, I briefly talked about it not being that much gameplay. No, uh, there is like I would say eighty-five percent game, no uh, story, and fifteen yes. percent gameplay, like ish. Yeah, I agree on that. Yeah, and I think it like uh, gameplay-wise, I like it. Uh -huh. I like how the way the skill checks work. Yes. I like how the combat works. I like how you how you some some is luck because you have some dice. So but, how does it work? How does it work? Now I'm trying to explain. Okay, so. For example, in a skill check or a combat, mm -hmm. see how many dice that that require or you ever are available to you. You can either take them off from the bag blindly and yep. roll them, or you can spend like uh, fatigue. Yes, stamina. Yeah, yep. from your uh, attribute roll, mm -hmm. uh, what you're good at basically, to get specific kind of colored dice. Yes. But you still have to get the right numbers, and then you're basically playing cards from your hand to manipulate that. So the skill checks use a book. So let's say you have going to do an endurance skill check, and it's level three. Then you need to have a green one, I don't know if you can see it, a green one, a green two, a green four, and green six, and a red two, two, and a four. Uh, and you have a dice limit, which is the number you, you, you draw, and then after you roll them, you can also manipulate them. Yes, absolutely. And as you progress, you will have, um, are able to play more cards, you are able to because take more damage. Because the cards are the ones that manipulate yeah, the Yeah, you dice. are able to, for example, roll more dice in a mm -hmm. combat, but then the, also the enemies get harder and the skill checks are harder as well. Yeah, so I think this is the same system like in roleplayer. We cannot talk about it, but you roll the dice and you use the... Uh, not like we can't talk about it like it's a secret, but we don't know. Uh, no, we can't talk about that. It's, it's a very high secret. And you play cards from your hand, which might then say, change a purple die to any color, or change any die to a four, yeah. or turn a blue die uh, around. Yeah. And, and you try to play these cards and... When you play two players, we could play like we had like a play limit, so we can play this amount of cards each, and then we have bonus plays that you can use to play more cards, and, and then they don't refresh before you rest. And um, I think I think it's a fast enough puzzle. Yeah. So it's kind of it feels we the other like big story kind of game we played this year was Sleeping Gods. Yeah. And I got really bored of the the puzzle there. I liked it a lot in the beginning, and I got really bored. Here, I actually never managed to get that bored with the puzzle because it was so snappy and we started to knew the cards we're like oh i need to turn that around i can do that and you know mm. and we usually we plan it out so we lay down the cards and use the die to say okay we can use this 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 and then when we knew okay we can do it then we actually did it yeah. so that we didn't do mistakes mm. and yeah, I didn't really get to the point where I was bored of it. No, I agree. I think it is a, a like perfect kind of blend with luck and uh, tactics yeah. for me because yeah. you have this freedom with your cards. I think it's enough meat for me to actually care about the puzzle that we're doing, mm -hmm. but still, as you said, fast enough for me not to get bored of it. So this is one of my like favorite kind of skill check ways to do this in like compared to for example um uh what do you call the sleeping gods no, yeah that one and also tainted the grail. tainted grail thank yeah. you yes i think though like the only negative thing is that by the end of the campaign you're gonna have a hand of like 25 30 cards yes there's so many guys it's gonna be like there's a like if you are a magician like me i'm really used to like, looking through cards it's gonna be easy if you're not used to having like a huge hand of cards and looking through them fast it's gonna take time. It's gonna be uh, horrible. It's been sometimes that we we did a skill check or something, yes. and after I was just like, oh, I had this card. We could I have done have this done much this. easier. Yes. But um, you get most of the cards. Like you have the biggest hand at the end of the game, yes. and it's not that many scenarios, so it didn't really bother me. But it was beginning to bother yes. me a little. 
I'm happy there were like five more scenarios. Yes, absolutely. That would have been a, a big problem. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about the characters. Uh, there is a way like to import characters. I, I did, like you play a game or role player and then you use that character in the game. I enjoy that. I don't know too much about it because we haven't played role players, so we didn't do that. But there's loads of different pre-generated characters that you can choose from. Mm. And basically what we did, you had to choose like different colors so you don't get like the exact same kind of stats in the beginning but other than that i just chose something that l looked cool like yes. he had a, a oh that is a robot man i like that you can also be a penguin but it i wasn't that yeah uh i agree uh you, I, you chose an orc yeah i did i think uh we did the right thing not to choose people with the same stats but yes. other than that you can basically shape your character the way you want yeah. after that so you choose something you think looks cool yeah because yeah. they don't feel that different it's not no. like oh i'm choosing choosing this character now it's going to play super differently no. you have a special ability and you have the stats you start with the more you advance your character the less it really matters because the character then just is almost the same so if you're looking for a game with like super interesting characters this is not that game no. you you are like oh they, i felt i'm i kind of like oh this is me but i wasn't that much looking at oh i didn't feel like i was this no. robot and that's probably also because we we're not Dungeons and Dragons players, That's um, true. but it didn't feel that different. Yeah, uh, difficulty. Yes. Um, I think it was a little hard in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We lost a couple of fights, we lost a couple of skill checks. We died once. Uh, we died once. Did we lose a skill check? Maybe one? Yeah, yeah, at least one. I, I think it was it's one. It's one that I remember. Um, uh, but it w was fine. Uh, and then as we progressed, we really focused on having a lot of uh, ability to play cards yes. and having a lot of dice in combat. Yes. So when we valued that and did a lot of resting, we, we it was very easy. Okay, so again, we just did a review of Old Trey where we talked about that not being too hard was one thing I enjoyed, and, and that was the way here as well. Like, yeah. if, this scenario, if it had been like five more scenarios, it probably would have been a problem. But the thing is that if, again, this is very simple for being a cooperative game. Uh, because when you think about like co-op game, you think about it being hard and you're trying to beat the game. And there's a couple of things that mm, doesn't like you say. When you advance your character, you can get lots of stat points. But, but you, we, we got like a few of those, but it felt like always, if we could get the ability to play more cards or draw more dice in battle, that was, that was way yeah. better. So if you don't do any of that, you're probably going to play it super hard. So you can make the game almost impossible by doing that if you really want to. But the game, the way the game is laid out, it wasn't... It was like sometimes we... we we let's say we roll like six dice and none of them match what we wanted to do and we're like oh this is going to be hard and then two minutes later we did it uh, and, and but the, we had some, had some close calls with them oh, yes absolutely though, so. the, the hardest thing is like if you don't have enough life and you go against enemies but if you have many dice to roll you're probably going to feel enough that you don't die we died once as i said and i'm pretty sure we lost yeah. then one skill check yeah. um the the problem here which is the the, the sad thing that is Somebody has written a lot of things that would happen when you lose a skill check. Mm. And you're not going to read any of that because you will always try to, to win the skill check because winning the skill check is better. I, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm just like not a fan of us say, sitting in and saying, you're not going to read any of that. You're going to win everything. And maybe we're just super duper good at the game, you know? No, so but, but it I, might happen that it, it was actually more difficult than we thought it was. I have been following this game on Board Game Geek, reading the forum almost okay. every single yeah, day because I, I have enjoyed the game so much. And every second thing people lay out is why is this game so easy ways to fix the difficulty the game is too easy okay, there's yeah. no okay, like so it's not just us okay, no I that is okay. like a big I'm good now. Uh, uh, and that's so just know that the game is easy in the beginning it the, the first scenario it felt super hard and like after the third or fourth scenario it's kind of like oh yep you can do this and at the end you are super powerful so when there's an expansion i hope you start with a new character or if, if we're going to start with this it's gonna be horrible. Gonna I don't know. Uh, but but uh, yeah, it has to be super super difficult. So just know that. For me, is it a problem? I, I don't really think it is no, because I, I enjoy. I, I like it. I this is more of a story experience for me. This is kind of the same thing. I I play video games on easy just to get to the story because I don't want to die all the time. And, and I'm not that good at playing those kind of like skillful video games. I well, don't have the yeah. time to 
learn that and it's kind of the same here i just want to play the game and experience the story yeah because one of the things that make this game like the, that easy is that you can rest after every, every time you do something yes. like either combat or a skill check you can rest and that um, can heal some life that is kind of random how much you heal you but you yeah. can pay xp for that yeah. and then you get all of your spent cards back on your hand and you get to get all of the bonus play markers uh, ready as well so if you couldn't have rested that much mm -hmm. I think this game would be a lot harder oh yeah absolutely uh, and yeah that is kind of weird because the like you have discard cards that you get back after the check and the spent cards but they don't really feel different because you can rest by spending one XP and if you win a skill check you win two XP so you use one of them but you could like make this game harder yourself by not resting, but yep. it is, it's an a possibility. Mm -hmm. So I would take it. Like yes. we always rested, like almost. Almost and every single In the beginning, time. like the ones we died, it's because we thought we yes. don't need to rest. That is true. So the game is a bit easy, not a big problem for us, but yeah. just know that. So let's talk about the story. We cannot really go deeply into it, but like we can talk about if you liked it or yeah. not. Did you like it? I liked it. Yes. I think it was like uh, somewhat. Bye. Uh, a, a classical story is uh -huh. just like uh, not like is uh, sitting on my, the edge of my chair and being like oh what happens next mm -hmm. but i think that like the choices felt meaningful yeah. uh the the story can branch uh, in different directions and i feel like there's a lot of things that i haven't seen in this game mm -hmm. i don't know if that is true but it gave me that good <sighs> feeling of oh i wonder what would have happened if I chose this path, yeah. and I like that feeling. Sometimes I hate it, but I because like it. Because you want to know everything. I want to yes. know everything. <laughs> so there's basically three factions mm -hmm. that you will uh, help or not help, yeah. and you will gain like um, alliance, allegiance, something. Different yeah. things will happen yeah. depending on how you are in those tracks. Yeah, yeah, that's a better way of saying. Without it. going into the yes. possible spoiler territories, that's kind of like in a lot of those kind of video games, like yeah. RPG video games, where you. Like, for example, Fallout 4, you have like four or five different factions that you can do a lot of side quests with, but then you kind of like, you if you do this this one, you cannot do anymore with this one, and you get to those points as well. Not that hardcore in this game, but I I feel like that is the biggest change thing. The, the big thing that is a very good thing, because the game is 80% story. I agree with you that the story is not like, oh, mind-blowing, but it's very well written. Yes. So you, I enjoy reading it, I enjoy what's happening, I want to know what's happening in the story. There's a little part in the middle of the game where I felt like it was kind of like, oh, now we have this fur thing that doesn't have anything to do with the story, but we just needed it to have one more scenario. Yeah, and I felt is... a little rushed at the end as yes, well. Yes, I um, agree with that. But other than that, I enjoyed the story a lot. Yes, as a whole, it's very good. I agree mm. with that part, especially at the end. The, the last couple of scenarios without going into details felt... Yeah, as you said, felt a bit rushed. Felt like it was going to just like, oh, we need to have this to the end, and then we go to the finale. Mm. Uh, and and but it, it, all in all, I would like this. If the story was bad, this game would not be anything. Yes. But the story is is very well written, very good. I enjoy it. You can play it again. Uh, do you wanna <laughs> do you wanna do that? No, because I'm a, not like. First of all, I don't really watch movies I've ever played. I would never play a video game. I play the game. I don't know why I would play this again because I know the whole story. It will be different and I know people enjoy that and I think there's enough here to play it a couple of times. Yeah. Be like, if you play, for example, the old classic uh, Knights of the Old Republic Star Wars game, you basically have like, you can be a Th Sith or a Jedi and you play it again, it's going to be very differently if you choose another path. And I feel like that's the same here. Mm, yeah, I haven't played that game, no, no. so I don't know. But I, <laughs> but I feel like I could definitely play this again, mm -hmm. like focus on something different and have a really fun experience. But yep. I don't need to do that to be happy with this game. I, I like it as it is. Um, but yeah, um, let's talk a little bit about like the keywords and titles, though, okay. because the game has a way of knowing what you have mm -hmm. done and not done, and that is basically keywords. You're writing things down if you have written this down you can read this yep. and titles uh, which is basically the same but it remains for the whole game and not yep. the, the scenario that you're playing that stack of titles gets big it's the so, same as the hand of course you yeah have to so look you, them. you have to look through them like do we have this title oh let's see okay yeah we do then we can read this and it, it started to bother me as well yep. but, uh, at the, towards the end of the game 
uh, but I still think it's it's better here than all the cards that we had in Sleeping Gods. Yeah, but those were like item cards. Yeah, so, that was so a you, lot of more you cards. You could have done that as well. You could have yes. like laid them out in alphabetical order, so it would yeah, be really yeah. simple to see. Yeah, we, we, we could have space for that, but we didn't do it. Yeah. But that would take a lot of space to do that. Mm, I think like back to the replayability, I yes. think that Sleeping Gods for me has more replayability because there's not an overarching story. Uh, yeah. It's more about what happens. Here mm -hmm. I know the whole story. It's not like next time this main event's not going to happen. It might happen in a slightly different way, but yes. it's not going to not happen. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that if you love the game, you might play it again because there is things, there's a lot of things we haven't read, a lot of things we haven't experienced. Mm. But for me, I would never play it again. But mm. I think there is replayability here for people looking for that replayability. Yeah, I think so too. So before we go into the final thoughts, let's talk about the expansion. Yeah. Uh, which is a book. It's a book. You get a backstory for your character. Yes. Uh, and you have some encounters for your specific character mm -hmm. that is set in like the kind of setting that you already are in, in that when it happens, yeah. I like that. You're kind of talking to the same characters or or the same place. Uh, I love that. Uh, but it doesn't uh, interact with the main story in any way at all. Um, uh, I liked some of the choices were yeah. interesting, but overall I didn't feel like I needed that to have fun with the game at all. It adds a very little part of it. And yeah. if you're only going to play it once, I don't think you need it. No, and actually back to difficulty it makes the game easier because you mm. will get better cars you will get stuff in that backstory and we even play like well when you play solo or two player you can play with multiple backstories so we yes. played with two so we basically saw double the amount of things you would we saw the same amount of things you would like in a four player campaign yes i would not buy this like uh, uh, the game is really really good but i would not buy this i think it's like 30 dollars something like that to get the expansion if you're planning on playing the game three, four, five times, maybe. But this huge book has a, like a loads of different backstories on it. But you are gonna read maybe like this much in your campaign. So you need to play it like loads of times for it to yeah. be good. It's I enjoyed it being there, but yeah. I would not have missed it if it wasn't. I like the idea of it. And I think like the work put into it is definitely worth the money. But what I get out of it is not worth it for, for me. No, but, it, but as 99% of the people buying it is not going to see enough from it for it to be worth yes. that yeah. money. Like the add-on, you could buy another game for that price, which yes. I think you should rather do. Yeah. Because it's not, it's like an expansion that implements into the game. It's not added content for the game. Yes. So, I think we've been through most of it. Should we do some final thoughts before yeah. we end the video? Should we just stop it here? No, I think we should. You can begin. I can begin. I think this was a really fun experience. Yes. Uh, we played through the whole campaign, which, which I rare. really enjoy. And uh, I have just like wanted to continue with it and wanted to finish it. And I have cared for the story and I have cared for the decisions and I have... Uh, had fun when I manipulated the dice with the cards and thought, okay, do we need another blue dice for this test? Mm -hmm. Should we try to just wing it and grab some dice from the bag? I, I liked the package, yeah. basically. Yes. I think this is a great game and I think I'm going to give it an 8. I have had a lot of fun with it mm -hmm. and there's going to be more content for it, right? Yes, there's, And we're uh, gonna get it. Yes, absolutely. This was very good for me. I, I didn't mind it being easy. It wasn't a bothering thing for me. I, I'm still looking forward to go back and play like Tainted Grail and things we haven't gotten to play. But if we're going to play Tainted Grail, we're going to play it on story mode because the game is way too difficult. So for. Difficult. So I, I, don't, I don't think for me this story-driven campaign games has to be super duper difficult for me to enjoy them. I really like this one. I think the story is well written. I think the story has enough interesting and new things without being like super wow it's yeah. very good yep i enjoy the overall arch i enjoy the involvement of the characters even though they feel the same the leveling up here is not that interesting like it's way more interesting for example gloomhaven yeah. you feel more like connected to your character there this is more like oh we get better yeah and that is good to get better to be better at things so i enjoy most of it there's not too much i don't like um uh, if it's for you, I don't know, depending on if you want that hardcore game, you'd rather maybe get Tainted Grail or stuff like that. But this is a very good game. I cannot wait to play more of it. I'm going to give it an 8.5. Nice. I think it's a 
very good story campaign game that we actually managed to finish, which is Ooh, amazing. Not bad. And that is the end of the video. If you are still here and you have not subscribed, you can do so now by... Clicking the subscribe button. It's free and it's fun for everyone. If you want to do something that not, that's not free, you can... Go to the Patreon and support us there yes. if you want to. Patreon.com slash Board Gaming Ramblings. And that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Cinema. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye-bye.